Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. It's about to jump in the water to check the bottom of the boat for the first time. You know, when you buy a boat, side unseen. Just hope there's still a keel and a rudder and a propeller on there. This specific model of boat isn't really known for too much osmosis. Obviously all fiberglass boats will get some sort of osmosis at some stage. These didn't have anything really documented to be bad for it so I'm just gonna have a look. I just want to see what the condition of the hull looks like, see if it's had any bumps, see what the prop looks like. I'll just put my mask on back to front. We're just going to go front to back, see what the skin fittings look like. It's been sitting for a while and it's in a marina, so we'll check all the zincs, the anodes, uh, shaft. This specific model has a swing keel, so I'm just going to see where it's positioned at the moment. And I'll see if we've got a rudder that's stuck or one that swings. That's about all. It's just a bit of a visual. Gary, I just hope everything's right. Always want to start from the bottom up. Here's an old boat. There's little issues here and there, but as long as there's no big ones. Hull's all nice and clean. Have a good look around. The anodes on. See what we find. We borrowed Max's hooker, so I'm gonna free dive. He's gonna stay down and I'll film what's going on. Sometimes things don't always go to plan. We have a saying in Australia, measure twice and cut once. Usually implies that you measure the item you're working on before you cut it or purchase it. In this case, I didn't measure the item twice but I ended up ordering two anodes because I was a quarter of an inch out as I guessed the size of our shaft and I was wrong. So we have our in-boom furling mainsail and as far as knowing what the condition of the sails are, this is as much as we've seen. So today, we are going to attempt to pull up the mainsail and inspect. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what the boat looks out like. After she's been scrubbed and we took some of the covers off and we took some stuff down, there's cushions everywhere, but she's starting to look a bit more like she could move. We've washed the covers, Lee's cleaning the bimini. She's looking a bit sad, the bimini, but we will have to keep her that way for a little bit. Okay, we're gonna pull up the uh, main stuff for the first time. Every sailor would love new sails, but at the moment, our main sail looks like we've got something to work with. This is a lot of unknown with this boat because we've bought it sight unseen, like you should do, guys. Not. Um, but we did. The main sail is fine. We pulled half of it up, and it, all the material looks good. The stitching, you can rub it really hard, which is a good indicator um, that the sti it's still alright. Old sails, if you rub the stitching and they perish, well, they pretty much throw them in the bin. Uh, these sails aren't at that stage yet, so there's a little bit of life in them. Uh, I'll try and find a bit more history and read up on the boat. There's a lot of literature on the boat. I haven't got through it all yet. Um, I'm just about to pull out the stay sail and we'll see what condition that's in. So let's have a look at that. We've got the main. Let's see if we've got a stay sail. Just probably need to do the sun. They can put new the, the UV. They can just put on those there. on. You can probably just touch that little bit. They probably stay winded in. Starting the sail. <laughs> This is not how you check your sails, people. Look what they've done. They've put the sail out. They don't know how to put the sail back in. What have you done, Mum? Um, so Lee thought it was a great idea to just to pull it out. Now we can't put it back in. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like it's going to break. Sound good. Bad idea. They kind of got it in. And it's going in. Ready. Look at it, she wants to get a loaf in the new oven. I do, I need to get some normal. I've been having a bit of a, had some moments, the last couple of days have been a bit rough. 
And we nearly hopped back on a plane and went home. <laughs> I was missing, I don't know what was happening. It's just transition, it's been hard, and but I keep looking at the positive things and uh, it's hard to be in a dock for me. I miss yeah, Indonesia. Yeah, what an overwhelming, it's a big boat. We've got a lot of jobs and we both have gone back and forth of being a little bit overwhelmed at times. What do you mean? I can just look down there and go, look at that big bird nesting wise with all loose ends. Oh my god, look at that. Uh, what have we signed up for? Oh. We've been off more than we can chew, baby. Feels like it. We'll get there. You reckon? Yeah. Today's my turning point. We can do this. Right, guys? And we're still jet lagged, people. How long does it take to get over into a new time zone? This guy up on the trumpet at the moment. He's busting out the sweet churns. I feel like getting a gra glass of... Uh, Some grass. Grass. I feel like a little glass of Chardonnay and just sit up there. But anyway, we've got gas bottles to install. Our gas locker doesn't shut. I wonder why. Let's have a look. So we have all these gas bottles that hang above here, but this is a gas locker and these are tiny bottles. So I reckon we need some horizontal bottles. Let's see what that looks like. Horizontal gas bottles. Now the lock are getting close. Gonna close? Oh, oh that's that, better. Hey? Got closing locker. Taj has created some awesome designs for us lately that we've put on to some merchandise. You can get your very own in the links down below. I haven't actually seen what's inside of it, so I don't know how dirty it is. Dad wants it clean, so it could be a bit dirty. So uh, let's see. Oh, that's gross. So this, I guess, is the freezer. That's like black. Yeah, that's pretty gross, so I've got to clean it. I'm gonna wash it first see if that does anything and then I'm guessing I'm gonna have to like scrub it and stuff. It drains, oh it drains into my, it drains into the clean cockpit so then I'm gonna have to wash the cockpit again. Oh, oh, oh. I just cleaned the cockpit. Oh that means I have to move everything too. Okay, the only brush I can find. Finish the free. I don't know if it's a fridge or freezer. It's something, but I've um finished it. This is what it looks like. It's not great. It's still a little bit dirty, but it looks better. Couldn't get all the black from the corner. It's like mold on the silicon or something. No, I think I got to go to the deck. So today I cleaned out another locker, and this locker is humongous. There's even something in it. This is the locker, but if we go a little bit more. There's a whole human being in there. It's so big. And yes, I did clean it, but there are still stuff in it. I'm pretty sure I have to like scrub it with some cleaner or something. This locker is massive. It's gonna have work stuff in one side and then all that snorkeling stuff, so. Back in the engine room and today, I'm gonna take off the water pump, hop on the push bike, take it to the post office. So as I said, I went over the engine the other day and I put my finger underneath here. There was a slight bit of oil, not a lot, but enough to say, you know what? We don't need problems later on down the track for what it's worth, hopefully not too much, but I'm gonna get, the pump's not damaged, so I'm gonna get the pump rebuilt, which will involve new bearings, new seals, and a little bit of peace of mind for quite some time. When we leave, we'd like to have a spare one, but if we don't and it's not in the budget, at least we'll be leaving with one that's uh, been rebuilt and new bearings, new seals, new impeller. I'm gonna take this off now. Quite simple, just gonna remove these pipes. I'm hoping my seacock actually works because I don't have a bung for it. So I'm gonna start with that first. So as long as that's turned off and we're not leaking water, I'll continue, we'll remove it, box it up, get it in the post. So when I get it back, I'll show you guys what was done, how much it cost, and where I got it done, because we're in California, for you people that haven't tuned in. 
going to remove these pipe clamps and hopefully I can drain a bit of this oil. This, uh, this is salt water. So obviously this is the raw water pump. Oh, oh, oh that's on tight. Maybe I can get this one off. Just hate spilling salt water everywhere. The better. Our valve's working, so that's isolated. Uh, when I get back, I will plug that up. It should be fine, but just don't want to get salt over that solenoid. There's going to be a lot more water in this one. Probably reinstall this with a couple more pipe clips because it still is part of the raw water system, which means if something fails, uh, you got the ocean coming in. Uh, that's a bit of salt water. Try and minimise as much as possible. Access there. Just don't want that splashing any salt water over my terminals. Oh, looks like my whole stud's coming out. Been nicely oiled when it was put back on. I was helping a guy in his boat the other day. Americans and Aussies have a little bit of different lingo. Australia, I'd say, passed me the spanner. In this case, a ratchet spanner. A friend looked at me a bit strange and he said, what is a spanner? So that's what a spanner is, guys, or what we call a spanner in Australia. That's the crescent over here. So like I say, this is actually, um, get my hands in here. Good thing about this build is if I drop anything, I pretty much can access the whole of this build. So the last catalpa, uh, we weren't able, we didn't have that luxury. So anything that dropped under that motor seemed to disappear. The access is a lot better on this one. So these were oiled pretty good when they went in. These are actually studs. So generally the actual stud itself, itself should stay in the motor and it'll just be the nut that comes off, but that's okay. Uh, two nuts came off and two nuts and studs came out. My non-work clothes. Sarah doesn't like it when I dirty my clothes with oil. That should come off. Okay, okay guys. So that is your raw water pump on a diesel engine in a yacht. Obviously everyone's engines will vary, but generally, there is a impeller in here that spins around and that wears out generally. So if you do lose water pressure in your engine, it's usually your impeller. And if your water pump starts leaking, it will either leak oil from the engine and that will come out through the oil sea seal. Um, and there's a bearing behind there and the same through here, there'll be a water seal. So what I may do, I'll fill you guys in later because I've got to get going now and hop on the push bike. I'm going to ask the guy that rebuilds this to keep all the old components and we'll actually see what they look like and I can explain a little bit more in detail what's going on. This wasn't leaking, it had a little bit of oil underneath coming out. Look it could be right for some time. I just thought it's one of those items you don't want to fail because you don't have an engine. We'll get this serviced up and we'll get back to you and show you what it's all about, what it costs and what componentry they replace on this. Worst case scenario, if this was leaking badly and it was heavily worn, they would actually replace the pin and whatnot, which would add more cost to the overall rebuild. But in this case, I'm assuming it'll just be a couple of bearings, a couple of seals, a new impeller, and they'll clean it all up and we'll put it back on. That's it. There's one last thing before I jump on the push bike. If you look down here, someone has tried to remove the impeller at one stage and broken a little... Um, these are actually a pain. And on our last boat, someone had done a really good job at trying to strip these. And it makes it really hard to get off if it is in an awkward position. So what I'm going to ask if he can actually replace these with little bolts that have a hex head on them. And it's so much easier to get a socket on there as opposed to a flathead screwdriver. So I'll see what he can do for us there. He might have to re-tap that one for me. Uh, I don't know if it's still in there or broken or so on. Who knows? But uh, I'll fill him in and fill you guys in. So that's it. Raw water pump. Perkins. 4236. Diesel engine. Rebuild. Underway. Okay, so we're just about to head off. I just tried to see what the 
I just scrubbed that off quickly to see. Generally, there's numbers here which show your impeller and make of this water pump, but I know pretty much what it is. It's not on there. It does say Japsco. I'm going to send this off now. If our funds allow us in the kitty, we will get a replacement one of these, a new one to put as a spare, because it is a very important part of your engine. If this unit fails, you don't have an engine. Oh yeah, hard work, isn't it? There's a bit of a hand on my backpack here. <laughs> working the old boy a bit too hard I think. Now I've got 10 minutes, or 12 minutes away and I've got 10 minutes to get there by 5 o'clock. And my haircut is at 5 o'clock so. I don't want to be haircut worried about raw water filters of pumps mate. Alright, put this down and get back to it. Thanks yeah. Gemma! These swimmers are from New Zealand and they are from a beautiful girl that does a lot of stuff that is very exciting. It's wetsuits and swimwear that is eco-friendly and beautifully done and I'll put the link down below. Ooh. Bella and I are going to be rocking these though. In our I think that's my episodes. pet. These yeah. are yours. <laughs> Brand is called Gemma Lee. Alright, enjoy your gift. Wait for us before you leave. Oh, it's from Chuck, Evie, Carla and Charlie. Oh. Thank you, guys. Oh. Evie, you picked the organizing things. Tara would be very proud. <laughs> this is from Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. That one is going to live once we get a tender. We don't have a tender yet, but that'll be, be our, our first, first day for our tender. But what tender will we choose? Oh, batteries. Oh, batteries. This, this some is batteries nice. from Greg. Bare batteries for all the DeWalt gear. It's from all from Greg. It's all from Greg. It's all from Greg. I have a GoPro. Lots of GoPro stuff. GoPro mounts. Oh, what's that? Dad? This is from Greg too. Greg, you're the best, mate. Get that out of your road, Bella. This is from David. Thank you, David. David. Thank you, Roger. This was from Roger. We have a parcel from another Bodie and SV Serenity. We don't have a head unit on board Bella Vita. Now we do. So these beautiful people messaged us on Instagram last week, um, not long after we got here, and they were upgrading their electronics on board SV Serenity and asked if we would like the head unit that they were no longer had use for. And um, we said that we would love it. <laughs> And here it is, they shipped it to us. That's the Ooh. unit. Uh, Axiom. It says, best of luck to you and Sarah and the children with the refit of your new sailboat. We truly enjoy watching your adventures and life on the sea. We wish you all the fair winds, following seas, and abundance of glorious sunsets together. Cheers, Doug and Meg on SV Serenity. Thank you so much, guys. We really, really, really appreciate your kindness. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, what else have we got Let's going go. on here? Great. Oh, this is from Greg. Oh, so I put a little first aid kit on our wish list and Greg said it wasn't good enough. So. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> he got us this one. That. Whoa. Oh, wow. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, mate. Uh, the other day we met this beautiful family that has been watching our YouTube channel over the past years and um, we finally got to meet them. They're here in San Diego. And as fate would have it, we've arrived here with not much on our boat, starting a new journey in San Diego. And timing is that they are about to fly out in a couple of months and start their own journey. So they're at the moment packing up the house, getting rid of things, downsizing to move on to a boat. And um, they had a lot of things that they were gifting away and they invited us over and gave us a whole heap of things that we are super, super grateful for. And I just wanted to say thank you guys. Yeah, we really appreciate all the things that you've gifted us and we will totally use them and they will be loved. And yeah, we just wanted to send a big thank you out to you. We're at Brent and Tara's house and they have a copy of Taj Eyes book. And we haven't seen one before, so that's pretty cool. And um, there it is, my home is a boat. Taj illustrated it, I wrote it. And super cute because Xander and Libby love this book, so they're excited about us coming. And yeah, we're super stoked that they have one. <laughs> that's cool. Aww.